Welcome to another instructional snippet. In this snippet, we will be deriving one of the basic equations of water hammer, the Joukowsky equation. In the process, we will apply the integral forms of conservation of mass and conservation of momentum for a fixed, non-deforming control volume. The integral forms of conservation of mass and conservation of momentum are provided below for review. If you are not familiar with the application of these equations, you should still be able to follow along, but be aware that the details of applying these equations are covered at a high level. Let's look at the initial conditions. We have water flowing in a pipe from left to right. At the end of the pipe is an open valve. We will not concern ourselves with what is occurring downstream of the valve in this instructional snippet. The important parameters used in this derivation are indicated in the drawing, including the density, the pressure, and the initial velocity. Now let's look at conditions following an instantaneous closure of the valve. A pressure wave, shown in red, is traveling to the left with a magnitude denoted as delta P. It is moving at the sonic velocity for the water in the pipe. The sonic velocity is often called the celerity and is denoted with a C. The initial conditions exist in front of the wave, while behind the wave we have a new density, pressure, and the velocity is zero. These conditions are indicated here. Please note that we define left to right as the positive x direction. Let's set up our control volume and apply conservation of mass and the x component of conservation of momentum. In setting up the control volume, we have options. Let's fix the pressure wave and use the relative velocities into and out of the control volume. This is standard practice for the analysis of waves, including shock waves. This will be a fixed, non-deforming control volume. We draw the control volume around the fixed pressure wave. The velocity of the water entering the control volume on the left-hand side is V0 plus C. The velocity of the water exiting the control volume on the right-hand side is C. Other parameters are indicated as shown below. First, we will apply conservation of mass. Our analysis will be for steady state conditions and the velocity profiles are uniform. There are two surfaces that have flow crossing their boundaries, the inlet, point one, and the outlet, point two. We will not go into the details on how to apply these integral conservation laws. That's Please good. see my other instructional snippets for those details. The results are provided here. Now let's simplify. We are left with delta rho is equal to rho times v naught divided by the celerity. Now let's apply conservation of momentum in the x direction. First, let's discuss the external forces acting on the fixed non-deforming control volume. The control volume is drawn so it appears large, however, we will treat it as a differential control volume so that we can ignore any frictional forces between the water and the pipe wall. The end result is that the only external forces we will be accounting for are due to pressure. Also note that we are applying conservation momentum in the x direction. Gravity is acting in the y direction. We'll start with the x component of the integral form of conservation of momentum, then we'll simplify. We're analyzing steady state so the time derivative goes away. On the left hand side of the equation, we identify the external forces. There are two. A pressure force on the left side is acting in the positive x direction. A pressure force on the right side is acting in the negative x direction. Next, we integrate the momentum flux over the inlet surface and the outlet surface. Due to the outward direction of the normal vector on each surface, the dot product for inflow is a negative sign and a positive sign for the outflow. Although I skipped the details, let's do a review. The first term is the external pressure force acting on the left hand side of the control volume acting in the positive x direction. The second term is the external pressure force acting on the right hand side of the control volume acting in the negative x direction. The third term is the momentum inflow into the control volume and the fourth term is the momentum outflow from the control volume. Let's do some algebra and simplify. Recall that from conservation of mass, we determined that delta rho is equal to rho times v naught divided by the celerity. Combining, we get that delta p is equal to rho times the quantity, celerity times v naught plus v naught squared. We are almost done. Let's expand this equation. We get delta P is equal to rho times C times V naught plus rho times V naught squared. 
Notice that the second term is twice the dynamic pressure. This expression gives the magnitude of the pressure wave generated following an instantaneous closure of a valve with an initial velocity of V0. However, this is not the Joukowsky equation. Let's check the magnitude of the two terms with some fairly typical data. We will go with water with a density of 1.94 slugs oh, per no. cubic feet. Let V0 be equal to 10 feet per second. Let the speed of sound or celerity be equal to 4,000 feet per second. Let's calculate the first term on the right hand side. We get 77,600 slugs per feet second squared. And those units are probably not comes to mind when we think of pressure. Let's clean this up a bit. One slug is equal to one pounds force second squared per foot. We will be using this in the conversions below. For the first term we get 538.9 PSI. Repeating for the second term, we get 1.3 PSI. As you can see, the second term is several orders of magnitude smaller than the first. Due to this, it is customary to just ignore the second term. Dropping the second term, we are left with delta P is equal to rho times the celerity times V0. This is the Joukowsky equation for an instantaneous closure of a valve with an initial velocity of V0. More general form is delta P is equal to rho times the celerity times delta V, where delta V is the change in velocity. I will be releasing additional instructional snippets on the water hammer. Until then, I must caution you that the Joukowsky equation is useful, but by itself it is not sufficient to predict the pressure increase due to transients in a piping system. I hope you found this instructional snippet useful. If so, then please like and subscribe. Thanks and have a great day.